Hey guys, welcome to our video. Not long time ago, the, something happened, very interesting. And this is about a certain condition which we, we're going to talk about. A story is told of someone when growing up. Uh, especially in that community. There is a general belief that some conditions are caused by maybe witchcraft and also maybe somebody having bad eyes, especially in an African community. So she is she's a lady, she was a lady in that community and something very interesting happened. The lady was uh, most of the time will not concentrate in class, she could uh, Call what uh, they call the collab collapse in class, and she could not be very keen in that class. So the parents tried their best till the child got to grade eight. That's a, an eight for four system. But when she got into the secondary level, she could not manage to continue with her studies because uh, the the condition became worse. So what happened, the lady was taken from their home and the aunt, and the, aunt the aunt, the sister to the mother took the, the lady uh, to her place. So what happened there, so the lady was uh, sometimes uh, in her sleep, the, the lady could oversleep in her sleep. Uh, she could not, uh, like if she, she got hungry with something, she could uh, sleep like uh, in two days and she could not and when she woke up you, you ask her what happened she could not explain what really happened what the auntie decided to do they took her to the hospital because when the the lady came or the lady came to the the, the new family the notion which was there uh, and this is a common practice there in africa where you get that uh, someone gets sick in the family, is taken to the nearest uh, relative, and from this to that distance, some um, people believe that that person can get well, even of uh, illness. I don't know how about you, your family, you and your belief, but this happens so most of the time in an African kind of setting. So when the lady was taken to the doctors, uh, they found out that the lady. Uh, actually was suffering from something called uh, epilepsy and uh, uh, the, the diag as the diagnosis was made the lady was started on medication and actually from that time is around now 20 years plus years the lady got married at some point she has now big kids though the husband passed on uh, the lady is managing herself on medication and she's able to do her daily daily work as a as a mother of the house and as the sole sole breadwinner for for the family uh, throughout the medication so the lady at the end of the day was started on uh, epilepsy medication so actually the lady was suffering from epilepsy but in her home the the parents and also the siblings believed that the lady was being be bewitched so they chose to take the lady to their aunt so that they can they, they can get away from the bewitching kind of uh, of thing guys welcome to our video kindly if you have not subscribed my name is vincent and the channel is future talks this is where we talk our issues and also today when you see the stethoscope here we are going matters medical and today we are going to talk about epilepsy, as I have mentioned from the brief story. So I don't know how you, what you believe, how you believe this kind of thing, epilepsy. Uh, uh, in my language it's called Endurume. Endurume, yeah, that is in Kisi dialect here in Africa. Uh, here in, uh, it's, uh, in Kenya, that uh, is a, a subtribe here in Kenya called Kisi. Uh, uh, they have a special name also for it in Swahili. I don't know how you call it in your language, 
but in English we're well, going to talk about the epilepsy thing and how it affects uh, the lives of every, every, everyone. So especially when we talk about uh, epilepsy, we are talking about seizures. Seizures, I'm going to write the name here, seizures or seizures. I don't know how you pronounce it from, depends on where you come from, but uh, uh, epilepsy is, uh, we, we are going to, to shortly see what it is and how it presents itself and how can you know somebody has that, uh, that condition, what kind of drugs one is put on and what kind of, what, what kind of, what can you do to manage that kind of a thing. Or how do you manage a patient who is uh, having those seizures uh, or scissors? Yeah, how are you going to manage that kind of a patient? So it is very important. So when we talk about uh, seizures, scissors, it is called. It is actually an abnormal electrical signal in the brain being uh, being fired from the neurons. Uh, so and it can be generalized or focal. Uh, by gener generalized we mean neurons are the special kind of transmitters in the brain, which take information from one part of the brain to the other one. So when you get it, there is an abnormal kind of exchange on those neurons. So a patient or someone it develops what you call seizures. So uh, so with the abnormal. Uh, electricity in the in the brain through those neurons somebody gets into seizures so th those seizures can be generalized means they affect the whole all the whole parts of the brain or they may be focal affecting one part of the brain so in the brain we have two kinds of uh, those neurons the first one is what we call excitatory and the other one is called inhibitory so when these are uh, they actually get a uh, get a problem uh, these are the ones which are likely to cause the special kind of uh, of uh, of seizures which affect most of the part of the brain so we have two types of, uh, of those kind of uh, of seizures the first one is generalized meaning they affect the electricity conduction of the brain is affected most of it and the focal means one part of the brain is uh, is affected so in inhibitory we have a special neuron like the GABA, what we call GABA and also excitatory guys we call the other one uh, like is an example is a, an example uh, kind of uh, of of, uh, of the, the neuron or the neurotransmitter called glutamate in inhibitory we have GABA excitatory we have uh, the glutamate so what can cause seizures what can cause someone to go to have those kind of uh, seizures? So seizures can be can affect anyone. Uh, so uh, and this may be the and due to various reasons, uh, they can uh, you you and I can develop this kind of seizures. That's why it is very important to understand how seizures present and what you are supposed to do when they present or what they indicate. Uh, example of one of the what can cause seizures uh, is uh, high fevers can cause uh, uh, this one, uh, especially high fevers. We see it in the the small kids, especially who come to the hospital setting. If a child is uh, temperature goes above 39 degrees centigrade, uh, so we get into a problem. Even an adult getting to the to a higher temperature of above 40, we get uh, that patient gets into convulsions or gets into seizures. So it's very important that uh, we control those temperatures, especially in the kids at some point. So if you have very high fevers, you are likely to go into those kind of seizures. Another kind of, uh, uh, if you have a CNS, central nervous system infection, if you have an infection in the brain, if you have a, uh, an infection on the spinal cord, it can lead one to have those kind of uh, seizures, especially when we have what we call meningitis, can lead one to have those kind of seizures. Another thing is what we call hypoglycemia. Hypo hypoglycemia is when you have low sugars, 
maybe a patient or you are you are diabetic uh, diabetic means uh, you are not able to control your sugar glucose levels in the body so and the, the glucose levels go very low so the patient or you are likely to go into seizures another thing if we are, somebody is withdrawing from some drugs uh, like uh, especially like alcohol somebody is used to taking a lot of alcohol and suddenly withdraws from taking it without that proper management in the hospital you get that someone can get into con con conversion also what you call a hypoxia so or low ox oxygen to the brain through other causes one can get into conversion also if someone has a brain tumor you have grow some growth in the brain and the brain is uh, the conduction is affected somebody is likely to go into uh, into those some 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 people also may have uh, these uh, conversions on what you call the idiopathic sometimes it is not known why somebody gets into that kind of uh, conversions so we have also what we call idiopathic causes which can also cause also patients who have stroke can also develop uh, uh, that one or a patient who has been sick for a long time uh, it can also affect that part of the patient and also one can get into conversions so guys uh, seizures can be caused with those many things i've mentioned like illness high temperatures hypoxia uh, tumors in the brain so someone can 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 really can really uh, get into such kind of a problem of uh, getting into conversion. So this is something which uh, the conversion thing or the seizure thing it comes about and can happen to anyone from the causes I've mentioned, either from from the drugs, high fevers, withdrawal from alcohol, uh, hypoxia, brain tumor, and also. Uh, uh, and also uh, other other problems, especially the patients who are, are also on treatment and they're not adhering to the drug regimen or the treatment they are, it can le also lead uh, to these patients to have that problem of... Uh... Kindly guys, if you have not subscribed to our channel, CH Talks, my name is Vincent, kindly subscribe, share and also like and give us a nice comment down there. We want to make this channel as interesting as possible. Give your feedback so that we make the kind of videos which you want to watch. And I want to appreciate uh, the kind of feedback I'm getting from you. So on seizures, we have uh, stages of seizures or seizures. As, as I've uh, mentioned, I don't know how you, you pronounce it. But the main important thing is how you get the point on, uh, on, on, the, on uh, these seizures and the epilepsy thing. So it, uh, normally the seizures happen in stages. We have what we call uh, prodromo, that is the first stage. We have uh, the second one called aura, aura stage. Also we have what we call ictus uh, stage. And also we have uh, post ictus uh, stage, especially in the patients who have, uh, who have uh, this uh, uh, epilepsy. So on the on the on the first part of it on the uh, post uh, uh, prodromo that's the first 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 kind of uh, stage where the patient is not uh, uh, is is okay and is he has not gotten into into the, the state into the seizures part of it on the part of the aura we have uh, uh, though it doesn't happen in most of the patients but it happens and when it happens uh, it happens on what you call the seizures of of the tonic and also the clonic type of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of 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 patients and in this uh, kind of uh, in the aura level we have uh, the patients having uh, a warning sign where uh, they have uh, they have some they have a very bad feeling about something bad going to happen where they are with a lot of anxiety they may be they may have altered uh, vision hearing and also they may have something what you call uh, deja vu 
they, they also may have they may develop what uh, something like a very bad smell or a weird taste or smell uh, which normally this especially when you talk with the epileptic patient they can tell you these kind of things happen to them just before the kind the, the kind of uh, uh, a big or that uh, seizures occur so another uh, the, the other stage of it is uh, when ictus as I mentioned in the ictus level we have the actual seizure which normally happens uh, within uh, one to three minutes and this is where you also want to see how many you want to time the where how many minutes the seizure takes because if it takes f more than five minutes it means that patient has what you call uh, status epilepticus and that one needs an immediate treatment and also immediate attention because it may lead to a very big problem. So ictus, where the patient now is experiencing such kind of uh, convulsions or seizures and uh, uh, a lot of brain activities are happening at that time and normally it takes one to three minutes. But when it goes above five minutes, we call it set as epilepticus, and now there we need to interfe intervene with other things. What we have, what also we call post itcas. Post itcas means uh, after the convulsion, and that is where the brain now takes time to recover. Like I told you now, the, the transmitters in the brain, the GABA and also we are we excitatory and also the inhibitory kind of uh, uh, neurotransmitters working in the, in the brain now they are getting into the normal activity of the brain so after in the post ictus the patient normally presents with the, the patient is very tired at that point or they want to sleep more they are con confused they may complain of a headache and at, that, at this point if you examine the patient the patient may have bitten the, the tongue they may have some injury on the cheek or the body because of uh, maybe a fall and also the kind of uh, 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 how they experienced that uh, uh, convulsion. So we have uh, types of uh, seizures. We have generalized and also we have the focal, like I said. In uh, tonic, uh, in tonic clonic or what they, we call grand mal is the most common and it takes one to three minutes and as I said we want to monitor if it, is, it takes more than five minutes we call it stated epilepticus and that is a, not a very good thing so in our stage uh, after uh, the, uh, that's anticipating a, a big seizure coming where, the, where that's where we take a pay, we also take care of the patient uh, to see that the patient uh, is safe so that when the conversion comes, the patient doesn't get into other problems which can be control, controlled. We have what you call tonic or the body stiffening during this, uh, uh, the ictus uh, kind of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of experience. The, like the patient now, uh, sti uh, uh, body is stiff and the patient is, uh, starts to recurrently jack yeah well that's what we call a uh, clonic so tonic means stiffening of the body and a clonic so we have tonic clonic uh, experience with that kind of patients in the generalized uh, uh, kind of seizures which involves especially uh, the, the the whole the whole brain and also in the generalized kind of uh, uh, seizures we have another uh, another type of uh, seizures called absence, also called petit mal, which is uh, petit mal means uh, and also is most common in in uh, in kids or pediatrics. Kids have this kind of problems. This is where, uh, like, if a child has an old mark, uh, like uh, they stare to be, they appear to be they dreaming. And also, this this kind of experiences in the kids, especially they get unnoticed. Especially if these kids are in school, the teachers will have a lot of problems with them because these uh, these kids look like they're absent-minded, or they are they dreaming. 
but in in essence they are they have what you call absence uh, seizures or petit mal where they are staring and also the kid the, the person or the kid may appear to be they dreaming so uh they they the 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 kid if you want to talk with the like in the class especially it's a classical thing the, which the teachers can complain about they talk with the kid the kid doesn't uh, get back or respond back sometimes teachers can take that as rudeness from the from the child but normally it is not uh, no it is not for it is it is not uh, intentional you get that the kid has a problem uh, with this petite more kind of uh, seizures and normally because it is very it's very weird because it takes like it's very short and it takes sometimes uh, like seconds uh, and if you sometimes they, these kids can't even remember what happened and they can't even if it was in class they can't even remember what the teacher was saying or what was happening within those uh, few seconds sometimes uh, uh, this uh, uh, petite mall is a tonic or we don't have stiffening and also kind of uh, jacking of the body we don't have uh, tonic uh, uh, the tonic, the tonic uh, and jacking of the body, so we have what you call a, a, tani, a, a tonic, like or what you call drop attacks. Uh, in this uh, kind of uh, thing, you get a if a child was si seated on the on the on the desk, the child may fall on the head on the desk, and after some time the baby wakes up. And sometimes it it gets to pass even the the teachers where you get that. Uh, the teachers cannot even understand what is happening. They think the baby, the child is joking, and uh, most of the time in an in African setting, you get that child can be caned or can be taken that the child is rude or something is happening. But uh, normally, those kids also they are predisposed to injuries of the of the of the brain because they normally hit hard rocks and also even the desk, or they can fall uh, fall from that from they are exposed to those. Uh, what you call uh, the drop uh, attacks, and also on the focal part of uh, of it, uh, we have uh, uh, the, those which affect the specific parts of the brain, and uh, also it cannot they, they are not very interesting. So what I'm saying about the, those uh, petit mal, the teachers need to be very very observant with the kids and also try to find out what is happening with the, with the, with those kids so that they take care of uh, of such kind of things on the focal seizures or a specific area and they are, which are which are, are, are partial we the patient may have what you, what i call the aura at the, the uh, or from our previous what i've talked about and they, it may lead to other problems uh, but most of the time, this kind of petit mal, especially on the pediatrics, is a big concern. Where even parents they may take their child to their kids to be rude, but actually something is up, is happening. So as interventions, uh, what we need to do, especially because someone is likely to to have those seizures. Especially if you know somebody is epileptic and they, that person has told you, I'm almost having, uh, I'm going to get the, uh, those, uh, those attacks. The, the, the pre, as precaution, especially in a hospital setting, the, we have what you call seizure uh, precautions. So you assess the risk factors. The first thing which can happen in, the, in that kind of uh, uh, jacking or tonic clonic kind of seizures is uh, we have the blockage or the close the blockage of the airway so oxygen and suction we have a special machine in the hospital which we suction uh, normally it makes a lot of some noise where you suction a patient to remove any secretions on the airway so that you make sure that patient is breathing well especially after those minutes or uh, after those minutes of uh, of that seizure so uh, you the oxygen and also the, the suction should be available for that patient also someone somebody should also secure an iv line where you put that uh, cannula to the vein to get uh, ready 
in the case of anything. Also, yeah, on the beds where the patient is sleeping or the somebody who has those seizures or is going to have those seizures, should the, the, the bed should be have bare bed rails uh, where to protect that patient so that when the patient is jacking or that tonic clonic kind of presentation, the patient doesn't fall from the bed. And also we should have the bed uh, on the lowest position. We don't want a patient in case of a fall to fall from a very high height and break the bones and other problems, which most of the time we get those patients coming from. Even at home, those people are epileptic. They are not supposed to be left uh, alone, yeah, because uh, anything can happen. Like here in Africa, you get somebody who is epileptic, the seizures have come and somebody is cooking or is in the kitchen, they are cooking. You get that person falls on the, on the fire and that person gets really bad roasted with that kind of fire there. And when people come to realize what has happened, we have even very bad burns for even third degree kind of burns for that patient because uh, of that uh, of that epileptic episode which happened for those those minutes so uh, it is very important we take care of those pay for, for those patients who are epileptic at home or at uh, in the hospital especially from they are very much prone to injuries especially from fire and other things and uh, that calls for especially people are epileptic if they are not uh, get an approval from your doctor or uh, the, the practitioner who is seeing you that you if, uh, especially if you are driving especially long distance uh, it you should be very your you, you, your doctor should give you approval for that because sometimes it can be very dangerous that you are getting those conversions and you are on the road maybe you are on the traffic you will injure many people and also injure yourself when you get into that uh, problem. So uh, it's very important to, that we take the risk factors into consideration so that uh, you get into taking care of uh, such kind of patient. When the patient uh, uh, also you should assess on the from the patient, you should assess if the patient is experiencing what you call the aura, that very bad feeling which uh, precedes the or comes before that uh, uh, episode of uh, tonic cloning kind of uh, seizures. So you ask the patient or that person if that person has what you call the aura. Uh, so uh, also know from the person if they have had their epileptic drugs. They, we have very many classes of those kind of drugs. Kindly. Uh, and also, I want to advise the, the people, I know because many people are on these drugs, make sure you don't leave your drugs, take your doses as, as, as addressed, and don't stop your drugs uh, because uh, you feel that uh, you, you, you don't want to take them. Kindly, those drugs are very important so that uh, you, you do not uh, get into problems. So during the, the conversion or during the, the seizure, period the patient should be on the side uh, 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 they, <clears throat> they may be side uh, or lying uh, they should be lie, uh, they should be on the side so that to avoid the, the tongue uh, not to uh, occlude the airway or the close the airway that the patient can get into get, patient can choke and get into other problems so as a person who is taking care of the epileptic patient do not restrain or you don't try to do, to pin down that patient so that you restrain that, that kind of jacking so also don't do not insert anything to the mouth sometimes people fear that that person will bite something in the mouth so you will cause more injury when you start inserting things into the mouth so don't insert anything there uh, also, uh, if, if that patient has something like glasses, you are supposed to remove them, yeah, so that the patient uh, doesn't get injury because those things, the glasses can also injure other parts of the body because those kind of movements are not controlled very well. So you get out of those, uh, out uh, anything which are restrictive items like uh, glasses. 
Also, what you are supposed to do is also to take care of the timing. You check uh, how many minutes is your patient taking or that someone you love is taking to, to have that conversion. Like I said, if that conversion takes more than five minutes, it's a very bad emergency. You should uh, get into attention of the, even the medical, uh, your medical practitioner or get to the nearest hospital so that the patient can be taken care of and the cause of that status epileptic has uh, been known. Also, you should note the characteristics of, the, of that jacking. You should see how the patient is behaving. Is he crying out? Is he stiffening? Is he jacking? Is it blood coming out? What happened? What is happening before the, that, that conversion or seizure? And also what is happening uh, after? So, and also after the, after the episode, you should be very calm and also reassure the patient that all, all, everything uh, is going to be is, is under control because when the patient gets out of those uh, kind of seizures, the patient gets uh, really anxious and uh, it can be really a, a, not a very interesting experience. We have what we call the triggers or things which uh, can worsen the, the, the seizures. So one of them is stress. If somebody is really stressed, it can cause, uh, it can trigger seizures. Trauma, like an accident or knocking of the head, uh, can cause uh, those kind of seizures. Overexertion. We have also what we call period pregnancy. Period or, or pre that's period like uh, when somebody is pregnant can also trigger, especially those patients who are uh, epileptic. They should be have a way of handling their stress. Uh, if it is trauma, as much as I avoid getting to the trauma. Also, another thing is uh, sleep loss. If somebody doesn't sleep well, it can cause, uh, it can be a trigger for someone having seizures. What you call electrolyte and metabolic issues, especially when we have low sugars, like I mentioned, and also what you call acidosis or dehydrated. When somebody is not well hydrated in the body, it can predispose that someone into seizures. Also illness, and also what you call visualization disturbances. There, is, there are smells also, there are in the visualization disturbances, we have also sounds or smells which trigger uh, seizures. So especially very high moving uh, uh, kind of uh, videos. They are not good for the people with epilepsy. They can actually initiate that uh, kind of seizures. So it's in, a, in a special way, there is a way the people who are epileptic, they are advised to avoid watching especially television or movies which are very flashy kind of, 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 of pictures because they are likely to trigger the part of the brain and the neurotransmitters cause uh, the excitatory part of the brain to cause uh, that such kind of uh, problems to them. Also, what you call under medication, if you are put on a dose of drugs, uh, especially the epileptic patient, and they are not supposed to stop at any point, they take the drugs or take the lower dose. They are supposed to take the dose as prescribed by the, by the, by the, by the doctor so that to take control of the brain activity so that we, we don't get into under medication which can lead to problems again. Recreational drugs like uh, people who take uh, hard drugs, uh, those are the, what you call recreational drugs. Alcohol is also included there. I know people take a lot of alcohol but at some point it's also a risk so you should control your recreational, how you, rec how you enjoy yourself. So very important also, we have special medications for seizures, uh, especially for epilepsy, we have barbiturates. Barbiturates, we have what we call phenobarbital, which is used for tonic clonic or focal seizures and the status epilepticus. Phenobarbital is a choice of drug which is normally used uh, in, uh, in the patients. 
so it's and it's very common here in Africa. So phenobarbital is very important uh, to, to be taken as, as a prescribed and a perpetuate, and it works especially on the GABA part of, of the brain, so that uh, it uh, it cools the brain so that we don't get into a lot of uh, of, of problems. So it is it more works on the inhibitory part of the brain, so that the neurotransmission can be can be can be held especially it works on the GABA so that the excitatory part of the brain is not uh, is not uh, is not uh, affected especially this drug because they are drugs especially these perpetuates they have uh, side effects and one of the major side effects we have is what you call drowsiness the patient may be complaining of drowsiness they may be uh, another thing. They may be ataxic, like uh, they can't walk straight. They look like they are drunk. That is the, uh, because those drugs work on the on, on the brain and also reduce the brain activity a lot. So the patient may be ataxic. So and also those patients should be monitored for what you call uh, respiratory depression and hypotension. So they are likely also to reduce the pressures the blood pressure so that patient is monitored for how the patient is breathing and also how the blood pumping action of the body so that the, the patient is, is pressure doesn't go very much down because it's all if it, it goes also very down it will bring a lot of problems also we have what you call identoins identoins uh, there are also special kind of drugs which are used an example is what you call phenytoin here in Africa, very common also. It's used for tonic clonic or, or for seizures. Uh, uh, it's, it's also used for the, for for such kind of patients. Uh, the phenytoin. After the perpetuates, we have now the identoins, and that is uh, phenytoin. So uh, on uh, on perpetuates, I've said about. Uh, uh, phenobarbital and also on uh, the uh, identoin so I've talked about uh, phenytoin so it's a very good drug also which is used here in, in, in Africa but uh, there are things which should be monitored or the patient should be taught if you are taking your phenytoin there are things which you should remember especially things dealing with your mouth and your gums because they are they, this these uh, drugs, because the, b them being drugs, they are going to cause something called gingival hyperplasia. Like the, 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 your gums are going to be to be affected, or they are going to enlarge and bleed. So you monitor when you are taking phenytoin, you monitor for those kind of problems. So it's normally recommended after you take your drugs, you always brush your your mouth very well. So that you get don't get that ma that gum problem. Uh, another thing which you get is the bone marrow suppression. Like uh, the the patient uh, full hemogram should be always be taken to check on platelets. Platelets are the the components in blood which control bleeding. So the patient is likely to bleed. So more, you some this patient is monitored with on phenytoin on platelets and WBCs to find their level and bring them to the normal levels as appropriate. And also there are patients who can also develop rash as a sign of reaction with that drug, so the doctors know what to do about it. And when you're taking phenytoin, it is said that you don't take with milk or antacid. Milk from, because milk and uh, antacids, uh, they, they affect the absorption of th that drug or they, they they, they they prohibit how the work the drug is absorbed into the body to to help you. So during the taking of those drugs, you are supposed to avoid milk and uh, antacids as appropriate. Also, we have a special kind of uh, drugs which we also make use of, and uh, they are called benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepines, so like diazepam or lolazepam. They are also very common. They are normally used for uh, absence and the tonic clonic or for seizures. 
these benzodiazepines and mostly uh, like I talked about the absence seizures, like uh, the petite mole, I talked about the uh, the pediatrics where the child is not able to concentrate or the child falls suddenly, cannot concentrate on obvious things. So benzodiazepines are 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 are, are used and they are very common in Africa. So. And in case of a reaction with that kind of drug, we have what you call flumazenil. Flumazenil is a drug which is used to counter other side effects, especially if the patient is very drowsy, and also uh, and uh, if the liver has been affected for this patient, we use what we call flumazenil so that we counter the, the problems or it's a reversal agent for benzodiazepine. So guys, it's very important that you know the kind of class of drugs you are, uh, you are taking. If it's a perpetuate, if it's that phenytoin, is it benzodiazepine, like rolazepam and diazepam, so that uh, you, know, you, get, you get to know what you are doing. So discuss with your provider, healthcare provider, where you get your drugs. And also share your experience with those kind of drugs because those drugs also are chemicals and they change the way our body works uh, very much so that we get to get as much as get to the normal work. These drugs are there to make us to work as normal as possible so that we get what we want with, uh, with our life. So on, the, on this uh, uh, benzodiazepine, that's lorazepam and also diazepam there is a very they are very important the drugs uh, where especially if you are they, are they work very fast especially with the patient who has very recurry, very long kind of seizures which take more than five minutes i call them uh, status epilepticus so these kind of drugs especially the benzodiazepines are given to that patient because they are they work very fast they're fast acting so the, normally in the hospital setting that's what is given through the, the vein. Other treatments, surgery is there. We have uh, where the part of the, the brain is removed that is causing the seizure, uh, especially in the focal seizure. If you have one area of the brain causing the seizures, it's, uh, it's there's a way it is removed so, so that uh, you get to work normally. Uh, in a in kind of special uh, situations. Also, we have uh, in the especially in the kids, they are put on the what you call ketogenic diet, uh, so that uh, so so that we control those kind of seizures. It's so that the child is not put in any other medication, but is put on ketogenic diet. There's a way it is done, like the the baby is put on five percent carbohydrates. 30% protein, 65% fat. It's called a ketogenic uh, diet. You can also read about it, so that we work on that part of the brain, which uh, the the patient may be predisposed to other to getting those seizures. So we have a special kind of test which you can find if someone is epileptic. And these are most common kind of uh, in a, a psychiatric kind of setting. We have what we call EEG. EEG checks checks parts or checks on the brain to check the brain activity of the neurotransmitters. I talked about excitatory and the inhibitory uh, neurotransmitters which work on our brain. So EEG, like EKG, EKG takes the conduction takes care of the conduction of the heart. But EEG takes, uh, checks on the brain activities of the patient, and uh, normally it is not painful. Uh, it's normally the patient is prepared and also puts the, some th things which are put on the head to check on how the brain is working to determine. And there's a special way the patient with epilepsy, uh, the, the brain works. So EEG is uh, the way and the best way to make a diagnosis for this patient who has uh, epilepsy so that the proper treatment is done. So from my, my starting story, I want to say epilepsy like another condition is a thing which someone can live with so long as you manage yourself well and so long as you support that person very well uh, because uh, 
and if somebody takes drugs very well and gets the proper diagnosis, somebody is able to do the th uh, th his or her things very well with the epilepsy and live your life and get the best quality out of your or out of your life. So epilepsy is not uh, witchcraft like here in, in Africa people believe. I don't know about your community what you believe about it. Epilepsy is real and uh, and uh, kindly watch the video from the start to now. I know I've introduced some of the some technical words there, but uh, I, I know you will understand them so that uh, we get to share and also support the epileptic patients. They are very important because this can be your sister, can be your mother, can be your, anybody else who you really love. Guys, welcome and welcome to our next video. Thank you very much, guys.